Well, hi again. This is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and today I'm here with Devin Knight, who runs our trading division and also a noted author. We're here to talk about some of the different differences between Informatica and SSIS. Now, it's important to note we are a little biased towards uh, towards a certain product here. Right. We're a Microsoft shop. We're a Microsoft yeah. shop, but but I wanted to be objective here. And, S and Informatica does have some strengths here. Informatica and SSIS are both enterprise ETL tools, extracting data out, transforming data, and loading it somewhere else. Uh, and they both have their strengths and weaknesses. Sure. So I'm going to represent the Informatica side. Okay. Okay. And you're going to represent the SSIS side. All right. Uh, and what we're going to start with really is one of the strengths I think that Informatica has is really around reusability. So I'm, I'm just going to put this. What I mean by that, LT. What I mean by that is I can develop the, the data flow component one time. I can say, this is the logic to encrypt, a, encrypt some data. For okay. Example. I do it one time, and I can use it across multiple different uh, data flows, potentially. Gotcha. Fair enough. That's a great feature. Yeah. Um, SSIS definitely has some capabilities outside some other vendors. So, for example, our company, Pragmatic Works, actually sells a tool called Task Factory, okay. uh, which has a component that's very similar to that called Data Flow Nuggets. So I'll have my counterpoint there to that. We'll call it Task Factory. Okay. So for reusability, what's nice about the Informatica side here, their, their feature is called Maplets. Mm -hmm. It lets you kind of map, do some mappings, and it basically can reuse those mappings over and over again. In this case, you're going to have to use a third-party vendor like Task Factory right. or some other ones out there as well. Task Factory has a data flow nugget to do that. Which is fairly inexpensive, by the way. Yes, yes, absolutely. And this, a lot of these things we'll list on here are going to be add-ons. Sure. Uh, all right, so what do you, what's best that you got here? Uh, well, SSIS, here's a big one. We're going to talk about cost a lot when it comes to comparing these two tools. A big one with SSIS is it's a free tool, or at least it comes with SQL Server that you've already got. So cost is a big one here for... Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the thing I always say is uh, it, you already own this, right? right. It's a free ETL, basically, because you, when you buy a SQL Server, you get free ETL. Unfortunately, that's not a, a, not a counterpoint for that because it, it is what it is, right? right. Um, it's, it is, uh, Informatica is a very costly tool. They've been around since the uh, mid-90s, at 93, actually, some 93, 94 time frame. So the perception is you're paying for... Um, uh, and our extra enterprise kind of features and, and that enterprise scalability. It's, Although we can make SSIS scale absolutely. well. Absolutely. It's what they focus on too, right? That's Informatica's yeah, that's main workflow there. The great thing is uh, about that is they can, they, that's all they do. Right. Well, one of the things they do really well also is looking at your data from a, from a data scientist perspective and saying, how did my data get there? In other words, impact lineage. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to be able to say, select a column and say, how did my data, or where does this data go? And how did it get there? Right. right. Handwriting is terrible today. Sorry, Devin. <laughs> uh, so uh, impact lineage is a big thing. So what, what can we do around, around SSIS with that? Yeah, well, SSIS doesn't necessarily have that built in. There are, again, some third-party tools that are fairly inexpensive that work directly in with SQL Server. One, again, that uh, our company sells, Primatic Word Sales, called BI Documenter, okay. which can do that as well. So BI Doc. And it has some great features for object lineage and impact analysis in it as well. Okay, so um, on this side, the impact lineage is nice. It's all built in the tool. You can right-click and say, show me the column goes. Right. This is more of a third-party tool, so it's like an add-on. You have to kind of go out outside the interface. Yep. Uh, yep. The good thing is Microsoft also is building that. They were building that at one point. Uh, it would have had a CTP out there, a technology preview, um, and right now there's some stuff that's coming eventually that might, that might uh, bring that CTP to fruition. Yeah. It's still a ways away probably. I got another one for you. Here, this, right. this, this is a big one. That we're gonna, again, we're going to mention cost a lot here, but a big one with cost that people don't think about or necessarily associate when they're first buying and purchasing software is developer costs. There's a big pool of developers uh, when it comes to... Sorry, wow. my, my spelling's wrong, bad today, too. <laughs> There's a big pool of developers when it comes to SSIS that you can pull from, and they're fairly inexpensive compared to an Informatica resource. Yeah, probably a mid-level SIS developer will cost, what, probably in the 60s, 70s right. for a mid-level kind of person. Right. Um, uh, now, on the, on the Informatica side, oftentimes you do have to contract that work out uh, many times to, to uh, sometimes offshore because it is harder to find developers. We, we, tried, we tried to hire one ourselves, and we had the position open for a good four or five months before we finally found sure. a person. So, yeah, the so cost is a, is a big factor on that side of, of the development talent. Um, now, they're, they're, they're out there. Uh, the cool thing is, uh, the nice thing about Informatica also, is there's loads and loads of different connectors that are out there. Mm. Uh, these connectors allow you to go to the things like salesforce.com, perhaps, or mm -hmm. go to things like Oracle very seamlessly. Of course, that's native to SIS, but uh, salesforce.com, though, vSAM, those kind of DB2, a lot of different connectors that are out there. Each one does cost some money as well, uh, in many cases. Uh, yeah. It's under contract, but... 
Uh, in many cases, it, it does have a, it, it's a five-figure kind of number to, wow. to buy a connector. Um, so what does SIS have around like, like connecting to some of those places? Yeah, again, this kind of comes back to, we talked about Task Factory. There's a lot of tools out there that have third-party connections. Like what you mentioned, uh, sales, salesforce.com, Task Factory has a connector to that at a much lower cost. So okay. again, Task Factory is kind of our, our compete there. Okay, and also they have, there are some uh, part of the feature pack, you can go to things like DB2 also. Sure. So you can get, uh, as part of Microsoft's core core offering, go to the, look, up, look up the feature pack, and you'll find extra connectors there, like uh, extra- At no cost, of course. At no cost, yeah, yeah if, you, if you're licensed for SQL Server. Cool. Uh, another great one here, another one we haven't talked about yet though, is uh, uh, ecosystem. So we have a lot of vendors. We talked about developers, that uh, give us a lot of resources at a cheaper price as far as doing development. Ecosystem's another big one. SSIS is everywhere. There's a lot, of, a lot of vendors, including us, that you'll be able to work with on improving how your SSIS system works. Uh, it's just a big benefit to using SSIS. Oh, okay. And, and Informatica does have an ecosystem as well. Not as large as Microsoft's, but it is existent as well. Yep. Uh, they, you know, they've been around since the 90s, so uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, partner support for that. And these products are very large in many cases also, a lot of mainframes. So, that, so I would say we, we check there. We're, we're kind of a roughly push. tip or tap. You push okay. in this case. Uh, one of the cool things about Informatica is its data quality story. Mm. Uh, what I mean by that is it's very easy for a, an ETL developer to say, let's drag this, this address data over and let's plug in and look at, look at uh, cleansing the addresses very clean, mm -hmm. very easily. So as far as data quality go, the story is very mature. It's been out for a long time. What does Microsoft have around that? Yeah, Microsoft's story around data quality is fairly new. In SQL Server 2012, you now have DQS that's part of SSIS. So data have, quality services? Yep, data quality services. It's now integrated in with SSIS. It's going to make it a lot easier uh, to really be able to pull in that kind of data quality we were looking before before. Uh, previously, you would have used things like Melissa data or some other third-party tools to be able to do the same same thing oh, Informatica okay. had. And, and, and Pragmatic Works Task Factory has some data quality components in it as well. But really, the data quality services is a new component, so don't expect the same level that you get from, from the Informatica right. side. But most people, it's going to be good enough. Right. It'll, it'll answer probably 95% of their cases, and the other 5% they might use scripting. Sure, maybe sure. That. Okay. I got one more for you here. Okay. Ease of use. It is much easier, at least in my opinion, to do an SSIS package, develop an SSIS solution, uh, rather than doing one, a solution through Informatica. Well, I would go back then at that point and say, well, yeah, it's great that you're easy to use, but you have to do the same thing over and over again. So I would go back then to, to reusability and say, yeah, you're easy to use, but you have to do the same thing four or five times. Sure. Um, the other thing that's kind of nice about Informatica that I, I think is pretty neat is, is scaling out. Uh, they have basically an a automated way of, of distributing a workflow amongst multiple servers. Mm. If I want to process 30,000 files, one server, no matter how strong it is, right. uh, is going to have an issue with that. Now, the only downside of that is you buy licenses for each of those servers, oh. and also a, there's a, uh, a scale-out cost as well. Mm. So it's a kind of a double whammy there. You keep, in, uh, you keep adding up here. Yeah, it does add up, yeah. Uh, and SSIS, of course, you can have a workflow pattern to be able to simulate that same kind of thing where you can have multiple threads doing multiple executions of the same package, and you can work that out as well on SSIS. Okay. That's called a work pile pattern. Uh, you can find that on our webinar or also in our master's SSIS class. Uh, so we'll kind of write that down, work pile pattern. Okay. There's, there's a few. There's, of course, there's lots more. We're only touching on, on the on the on the edge cases here. One more thing that I really like that is that um, I find it's been called the business glossary. Now, the problem with this, the, the good thing about this, is it basically gives our users a way to to annotate annotate the data themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Annotate uh, how, what's happening in this package or this workflow in, in Informatica's case. Or annotate what this table's doing, but kind of creating a data dictionary. In other words. Oh, okay. Uh, so, pretty neat feature. The challenge that we find is when we, when we actually interview real customers that, that bought this, the, they, the sales guy talked to them a, lot, a while ago and they talked them into this, and is nobody uses it. It's a great <laughs> feature, but when it comes down to discipline of actually sitting down and actually annotating stuff, you know how it is in SIS, sure. thing, and we don't do that very often. So it's it's a usability. Yes, it's great that we have it. Unfortunately, it's it's not going to be as usable there. So there's and, and that happens a lot of cases. When, when Informatica or anybody sells an architect, usually when they're first starting a project, right? They're, they're looking at this this kind of sheet right here, right? And talking to an architect, and the architect's going to say, "Yeah, I want that. I want that. I want that." But then years later, when you go back to that company, you say, "Well, which of these things are you really using?" They'll be using the connectors, right. using the impact lineage. 
and that's about, and then you need the core ATL stuff. Sure, sure. So really, the the, the, the scalability of both these products is can be, can be on par. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, this is kind of stuff we teach in the Master's SIS class, but also we have a new offering that we're excited to announce uh, today, actually. It's the first time actually yeah. announcing this. Uh, and this is that we actually are offering an Informatica conversion um, a suite now, as well as a series of services to get you off the platform if you choose to get off. Because as Devin mentioned, the cost factor, the cost of that maintenance does get very, very yeah. expensive. In many cases, six figure, uh, some, seven, some companies I know of a seven figure for maintenance in many cases. So we can get you off that Informatica. We have a whole practice built around Informatica conversions to SSIS, whole series of tools around getting you migrated, as well as a whole bunch of patterns and practices around getting you and training your team on best practices in SSIS. Yeah, so we not only get you migrated over, but we also teach you then at that point how you can use SSIS going forward and building your own new solutions. Right, right. We, wanna, we don't want to build a condo in your area and, and, and run with it. We want to we make sure you guys know how to fish at that right. point also. Well, thank you guys for joining us today, and thanks for, uh, for playing with me today, Devin, on, on this Informatica versus SSIS uh, uh, smackdown. Uh, <laughs> you guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.